Hello everyone. The topic that I am going to discuss is water vascular system in echinoderms. Let us see the learning outcomes of this presentation. So we will learn what are echinoderms. We will see a brief account of the water vascular system. We will also see the different parts of the water vascular system. We will see the function of water vascular system with special reference to locomotion. We will also see certain other functions. Now this presentation will be beneficial for students who are pursuing their graduation in zoology as well as in life sciences. So let's begin. What are echinoderms? Echinoderms are a phylum of marine invertebrates and include starfishes, brittle stars, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, crinoids, etc. They are the most diverse group of marine invertebrates and play a very important ecological role. Water vascular system is very peculiar to echinoderms. We will not find water vascular system in any other organism. So it is a hydraulic system used for locomotion, for capture of food, for waste transportation as well as respiration. So water vascular system is a modified part of siloam and can also be named as the ambulacral system. So the canals of the water vascular system consist of seawater. Coming to the parts of the water vascular system, so the water vascular system can be divided into madreporite, stone canal, ring canal, radial canal, tidal body, polyan vesicle, lateral canal and tube plate. So in the diagram nearby you can see the madreporite stone canal very clearly. Is it visible to you? I am sure it is. So what is a madreporite? So it is a rounded calcareous plate that is present in the avural surface of the central disc of the echinoderm. It bears a number of grooves and furrows and each furrow leads to minute pore canals. These pore canals unite to form the collecting canals. Let's see the stone canal. Stone canal is a S-shaped canal. The walls of the stone canal are strengthened by a series of calcareous rings and are lined by cilia. The stone canal helps in drawing seawater from outside into the canal through the madreporite. One end of the stone canal opens into the outside through the madreporite and the other end opens into the ring canal. The ring canal is a wide pentagonal ring-like vessel lying around the mouth. The radial canal from its outer surface of the ring canal it gives off five radial canals one entering each arm. The radial canals run up to the tip of the arm and end in the terminal tentacle of the echinoderm. Then comes the tidemen bodies. The ring canal gives out small interradially nine yellowish irregular or glandular bodies called racemos or tidemen bodies. Then we have the polyan vesicle. The ring canal bears on its outer side five small pear-shaped structure called the polyan vesicle. They are all interradially arranged and are supposed to regulate the pressure inside the ambulacral system. Coming to the lateral canal, in each arm the radial canal gives out two series of short, narrow, transverse branches called lateral canal. Each lateral canal is attached to the base of a tube foot and is provided with a valve to prevent backflow of fluid into the radial canal. Tube feet. There are four rows of tube feet in each ambulacral group. A tube feet is hollow, elastic, thin-walled like structure. It can be divided into three parts, the upper sac-like ampulla, the middle tubular podium and the lower disc-like sucker. Their main function is respiratory as well as locomotory function. Coming to the main part, that is the mechanism of locomotion in echinoderms. 
So the water canals or the water vascular canals are lined inside by a number of cilia. And we know that the cilia, they beat in synchronization. So what happens is that the cilia inside the canals of the water vascular system, they beat together. And as a result, the seawater that is surrounding the echinoderm, it enters through the madreporite. From the madreporite, the seawater then passes through the stone canal, ring canal, radial canal, and finally it reaches the tube feet and their ampullae. Now what happens is that the ampullae contract and the valves that are present in the junction of the lateral canal as well as the tube feet prevent the backflow of water into the radial canal. Then what happens is that the water is forced into the podia and as a result the podia are elongated. The suckers are then applied to the substratum. Again when the tube feet contracts it pushes the body forward. The water from the tube feet is again pushed back into the ampulla and as a result the tube feet shorten. So we can say that the water first enters the ampulla then it goes to the podium stretching the podium as a result the suckers they attach themselves to the substratum. Okay then what happens is that again the water push itself back from the podium to the ampulla as a result the suckers they detach themselves because the tube feet gets shortened okay so this process is repeated and by this mechanism the echinoderms they move forward other than locomotory function the respiratory function so we can say that this water vascular system also helps the echinoderms in capturing their food. Moreover, they also help the echinoderms to attach themselves into the substratum. So these are the references that I have followed for this particular presentation. I am sure my deliberation on water vascular system will be beneficial to you. If you have any queries, please feel free to mail me at the email address given below. Thank you for your patient listening.